Hi everybody! This is the video for week one of Axide 232, Introduction to Actuarial Mathematics at the University of Waterloo. So I'm just going to go over some of the main topics and the notation and definitions that we introduced during the first week of class. The first thing we talked about were different types of insurance contracts and people came up with a great long list of all sorts of insurance contracts and there are lots more details in chapter one of the textbook that's posted online. But in this course we're going to be focusing on life contingent insurance contracts. So that's something that depends on a person surviving or dying until a particular time. So either an insurance benefit that pays out upon death or an annuity that continues payments every year or month or quarter or whatever while the person is alive. Those are both life contingent, contingent on a life being alive or dead. So in order to model these insurance contracts and properly price them, we need a model for how long a person is going to live. We need to know a probability distribution for their lifetime. So we introduced a lot of new notation this week. The first thing was we actually have a notation for a person who is a certain age, and we call that a life age x, that's x in brackets, or of course at the very start of someone's life they're a life age zero, zero in brackets. And then we defined a random variable which is the entire length of that person's life, and that's called t zero. So starting from the instant they're born until the person's death, that's a continuous random variable which we call t zero. So it's a random variable, it's a continuous one, it's going to have a cumulative distribution function, which we call big F0 of x. And of course, we can just take 1 minus big F0 and get the tail distribution, which we know as the survival distribution, S0 of x. And then also, if we want, we can look at the probability density function, little f0 of x, and that's just gotten by taking the derivative of big F, or negative the derivative of S, because F and S are just 1 minus each other. Of course, newborn people don't often buy insurance, so we need to worry more about a life who's already attained a certain age. And the remainder of that life is going to be a random variable. And we call that tx. So if someone is already age x, tx is the remainder of their lifetime. So their entire age at death would be x plus tx. And we can develop formulas and models for this random variable tx by conditioning on t0. So we have uh, a number of different ways of deriving information about tx, this new random variable. We can get the survival function sx of t, and of course also we started by getting the, the, sorry, the cumulative distribution function big F sub x of t. And after a derivation, we ended up with this formula right here that has a star. If we want the survival function sx of t, so that would be the probability that a life age x survives past t more years, at least, maybe more, that would be great. We can get that by just dividing two survival functions for a life age 0. So we just take the probability that a life age 0 survives 2x plus t and divide out the probability that they survived 2 age x. And that's what we're doing. We're basically calculating a conditional probability. We know that the life is already age x, so we're conditioning on that fact that t0 is greater than x, and then looking at from there, what's the chance they survive t more years. And using the logic of this equation right here, we were able to come up with a little bit more general case. So we don't have to use this starting at age 0. We can start it at any age. If we want to know the probability of a life age x surviving past t plus u years, well, first they have to survive t years, and then from there they have to survive u more years. And that's the really nice thing about using survival functions, is we can combine them in this way. In order to survive an entire time period, well, first you have to survive halfway, and then the rest of it. So we can always break up survival probabilities like this, and that's why we find the survival function s much more useful than either the CDF, big F, or the PDF, small f. So that was everything for this week. There is no tutorial this Monday, but there will be one every week after that. And of course, some of the weeks have tests in it. So I will see you on in class on Monday. If any of you are writing the P exam, good luck on that. And I'll see you in class. Bye.